Hi there. In this video I want to install the Firefox web browser and several add-ons that are very useful to web developers. So I'm going to just start off pretending that I don't actually have Firefox already installed on my computer. And I'm going to use the Chrome browser here and I'm going to go ahead and do a search for Firefox. There it is, mozilla.com slash Firefox. And the current version at the time of this recording is version 3.07. Version 3 of Firefox is a fantastic version. If you haven't used it before, I think it's really going to win you over. So I'll go ahead and click on free download. And then I'll choose save here. Now I'm in um, the Chrome browser, so that gives me slightly different options, but I'll just go ahead and click save. It's downloading to my computer. Okay, now that that's done, I can simply go to the Downloads folder in my My Documents folder, which is where I download stuff from uh, Google Chrome. There's my setup. I'm going to go ahead and double click to install that. Okay, now that I've got Firefox installed and running, I'm going to go and perform one of my first uh, favorite f uh, tricks or features on Firefox 3. But I'm just going to head over to Google's website and I'm going to right click on their search box and I'm going to choose Add a Keyword for this search and for name I'll just put in Google my keyword will be just the letter G and then I can just click add now that that's taken care of I want to go ahead and install some add-ons to Firefox that are really useful for web developers and of course add-ons are simply little add-on programs that supplement and enhance the features already built into the Firefox browser so I'm gonna go ahead and perform searches the first one I want to get is the Google add-on IE tab. So IE tab is a fantastic add-on for Firefox that allows you to pretend to be the Internet Explorer browser. So you can really see how web pages look in Internet Explorer versus Firefox. And on some pages it's dramatically different, especially on some Microsoft sites. So this is how easy it is to add to install an add-on. I'll simply click Add to Firefox, give it a few seconds, click Install Now, and there we go. Now since I know that I'm going to be doing several more, I'm going to wait and I'll just restart Firefox after I've got all several of them on there. So my IE tab add-on is now installed. Here's another one I'd like you to consider. Firebug. The Firebug add-on is a really great way to look at the source code, including the HTML and CSS of a particular web page. It's got some really nice features, and I'll show them to you in just a second. That's taken care of. Here's another good one. Web Developer. The Web Developer add-on for Firefox. It's going to give you a toolbar with lots of great options. Fire FTP. Fire FTP is basically an FTP client built into your Firefox browser. Measure it. The Measure It add on for Firefox. Really useful for measuring out in pixels various things that are on a web page. Now that all of my add ons are installed, I'm going to restart Firefox. Okay, I'm back in Firefox, and I can see over here in the lower left corner, I have an icon that represents my Measure It add-on. Over in the lower right corner of my status bar, I've got an icon that represents Firebug and one that represents my IE tab options. And now I want to right-click on any toolbar, and I'm going to do a Customize. And there's a few other things I want to put on here now that I have the ability to do so. I see that I've got a Firebug icon, but I'm going to stick with using the one in the status bar. I've got a Fire FTP icon. I'm going to add that to my toolbar. And I've got a Web Developer icon. I'm going to add that to my toolbar as well. And I don't really need the bookmarks. I use a shortcut for that, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I use Escape instead of Stop. And I use F5 instead of Reload, so I can get rid of those. Now I'm done. All right, now I just want to give you a quick rundown on several of these here. So I'm currently on a certainly I'm uh, currently on a web page here. The last add-on that I put on was Measure It, and I'm in Firefox mode. I know that because down here in the lower right corner, I see I've got a little Firefox icon in my status bar. If I click once on this icon, I'm now in Internet Explorer mode, 
and I can see how my page looks when I'm viewing it in Internet Explorer. And there's really not a dramatic difference on this particular page, but it is useful when you're designing web pages to see how your pages look under different browsers. So that's a pretty useful one. I'm going to head over to apple.com and now I want to look at the, one of these other add-ons here, Firebug, which is a little icon right down here. I'm just going to click on that and the lower portion of my screen goes into a view source mode, but even fancier than that. Uh, so I've got Firebug launched over at the, at the Apple website and I can certainly expand this and I can really look at the HTML very clearly with what they've got going on. Now I can click on inspect mode and in inspect mode I can hover over different portions of the Apple website and it'll activate in the source code the particular thing that I'm clicking on. So I say, wait, so how are they doing this particular part of the menu? Well, down there in the HTML or the Firebug view source, I can see, well, this is simply a list item. Now you can also view their style sheets. So this is the style sheet used at Apple, or at least one of them. Notice it's base.css. If I click on this option, I can see that they have several CSS files available to me. And right now I'm looking at their base CSS file. Okay, so I'm going to edit uh, part of Apple's CSS file. So I'm over here and I jumped over to their home.css file and I wanted to change something that would be obvious on the screen. So I'm looking at the footer over here on Apple's website and I can see that I found a section in their CSS that controls the anchor tags inside of their footer area. Currently it's margin right zero. Now if I double click on this I can modify this and I can also press the enter key and I can create a new declaration for this. So let me put in something that will really stand out. How about if I do font size and 20 points. There we go and if you notice the footer, the anchors in the footer just really got big. And let's do something else. How about background color pink and it looks like I have an extra semicolon up here there we go so now we can see the large font and the pink now you're not truly editing their CSS file but it allows you to do some tweaks and then you can disable things notice I can just click this button I can get rid of something so I say oh, alright uh, how is that CSS applied the other one I want to look at let me go and close this the other one I want to look at is measure it really easy one to use so I'm still here on the Apple website I'm gonna click my measure it icon down in the lower left on my status bar Firefox now I get a little crosshair and I can click and drag a rectangle over something so I can get the measurements in pixels, 238 by 154 pixels for that particular div, let's say. That's pretty useful. And I'll close that. And I can click on the ruler, the measure it ruler icon again to disable that feature. Okay, the web developer is a toolbar, a series of options. There's a bunch of them on here that I'm not going to check them all out. However, a really cool one I think is I'll click on their CSS menu for the web developer toolbar and I'm going to disable styles, all styles. So I can see how a particular web page looks without any style sheet. Why might you want to do this? Well, you might be curious how does your web page look and function if somebody is visiting it with um, the inability to use CSS or perhaps they're using a braille browser or an oral browser and I'll go back to CSS and I'll uncheck all styles so the CSS is back and the other one I want to show you is Fire FTP. Fire FTP is a built-in FTP client it uh, gives me a, a very familiar two window FTP client. I'm going to go ahead and create an account and I'll call this uh, webdev79 the host I'll put in my login password click OK and now I can click connect so now I'm able to simply publish got my local computer on the left, I got my remote computer on the right and I can publish files as normal so these are just some of the add-ons that web developers will find useful with the Firefox browser.